p.m. my time. So we can officially start hello to everybody uh, who has joined us for Nathan's session today. Um, if you, I want to, I'm actually curious to know if anybody saw Nathan's listing presentation session last week, that was jam packed with tons of amazing information. Now I know today we have a um, broker focus, but in case you caught his listing presentation, I would, um, that's great. If you didn't, I would encourage you to check it out and um, encourage your agents to go ahead and watch it. Um, I found Nathan's presentation to be incredibly uh, informational, insightful, informative, all those great high words um, <laughs> to use. Um, and I'm really looking forward to your broker focus session today. So um, without further ado, I know you have a lot of info to share with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. Being said, if you have any questions for me, I'm listening um, the entire time. If anybody has questions out there in the audience, you can go ahead and ask me. I think we will have some time um, for, for a few questions towards the end. Um, but I see Nathan is sharing his screen. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and you can take it away, Nathan. <laughs> well, thank you. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yep, I can see it. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you so much for one having me back. Uh, because for today, it's we have a bit of a more of a, an intimate group now. Now that's it's always been intimate, because it just seems like it's just us and our computer screen over the last uh, 10 plus weeks. But uh, for this conversation in particular, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to be able to speak with you because for some of you may know this, uh, as far as my story and where I come from for some that don't. Uh, to be a broker owner in this business, especially within this Remax family, is something that's very, very important to me. For some of you know, I am a second generation broker owner in Remax. My father started a franchise back in the mid 80s. My mom was the office manager cutting the checks and I was the oldest of three boys that was running around the office doing their homework in the office and having the agents in the office take me to baseball practice, baseball games, do whatever it is I was involved with because my dad was operating the office. And for you on the other side of this camera, I understand the struggles that you deal with every single day. I'm not just here to talk to you about something that I haven't experienced. This is something that it means a lot to me and it means a lot to my family. And I am, like I said, grateful for the opportunity to be able to help you, especially in general with being, taking the responsibility of this leadership position, but given these times, because during these times, more important than ever, our leadership is absolutely critical because our agents, our industry, they need us. And as you've probably heard me speak you know, about a month or so ago when I was doing business planning and understanding that right now we're being tested, we are. And we're being tested to the level of our true character to identify who we are, not only as, you know, as, as business owners, as broker owners, as leaders, but as people. And people need us right now. And it's more than what is it we've said in the past. It, what we say doesn't matter right now. It's actually what it is that we do. There was a trainer by the name of Brian Tracy in the US that I was introduced to from my dad back in the early 90s. I used to you listen to these tape cassettes back when tapes were you know, in, in the thing. And then eventually progressed to CDs and so on and so forth. But it was, it was a tape cassette series called The Psychology of Achievement by Brian Tracy. And one of the things that Brian Tracy said is he said, you know, your kids, your children, recognize how much you love them by not what you give them, but how much face time you provide to them. And I think that has stuck with me forever, certainly as I've grown, gone through life, but mostly as a, as a father and now as a leadership position, because our team, our agents, our marketplace, it's not what we say, it's what we do. It's not what we give. It's the face time we provide to show them that we truly care. And I wanted to start by saying that because I think it's important as we go through this and try to understand, you know, how are we going to be able to recruit, but most importantly, how do we attract in the new culture, right, that we, that's being created for us every single day, right? So to get this started, we've got 60 minutes that we're going to jam together. And, you know, this, just to be fair, this is a two-day presentation. And, and in trying to narrow it down within 60 minutes, I said, you know, what value? I want to give as much value as possible on this webinar at 2 o'clock for most of the people on the other side of this, 8 o'clock in the morning for me. How much value can I provide within the 60 minutes? And what should we focus on? 
And that's what I want to focus on is how do we recruit for the culture and train for the skill? Because the reality is when we start thinking about, you know, how is it, who is it we need to attract? Who does we need to, uh, you know, uh, recruit for our, for our offices? The main focus is usually on skill. But how many skillful, educated agents in your marketplace right now are sitting in their houses doing nothing? How many skillful, educated agents are sitting in their house saying, hey, I'm just going to wait for all this to pass over. I'm going to hide in my corner and I'm not going to try to better myself during this downtime. How many skillful people are doing that? That's a question. But then you have to understand how many people that maybe don't have the experience are out there every single day trying to better themselves, to put themselves in a better position so they can have a better impact in the marketplace after this is all done. I want you to think about that because I want you to be able to recruit for culture because that's the type of culture that you want to be able to appeal to, not necessarily the skill because we can always train for the skill. Remax of Europe is giving you a platform to really be able to train people to another level. But you got to be able to attract the culture because that's the culture that Remax attracts. It's the culture that I've been a part of <clears throat> since the mid-80s when my parents started their franchise. It's the energy that I feel when I come to see you guys in Europe. And I hope sooner rather than later, I'll be coming to see you guys again. So when we're looking at that. we got to recruit slow and fire fast. So as we're looking at how we're identifying the right agents in the marketplace, we have to really evaluate what's available to us. And if we find that they're not the right fit, we got to let them go as quickly as possible because they can be a disease, a virus, let's say, in your office. You got to be very, very careful with that. But when you recruit slow, how do you recruit? How do you identify the people in the marketplace, especially now when you don't get to see people necessarily face to face? Well, there's an analogy that I see in the marketplace, something that I use, something I express to the team. Then in any marketplace, visibility beats ability any day. Let me say that again. Visibility beats ability any day. So who in the marketplace is visible in their marketplace? Who is acting and showing their leadership potential in the marketplace offering a tremendous amount of value right now that may not yet be associated with your office? I want you to look at your marketplace to identify who is being visible, who is being visible, putting themselves out there, taking a position of offering value. Those are the people that you need to take your time and say, what can I do to attract them? And that's what I want to be able to walk you through here today. Now, what do we do and who do we want to attract? Well, it's clear. It's the A players. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard, you know, what the difference between an A player and a C player is. Like, I get it. I've been hearing it for years. But I want to really dig into what that is because I've made the mistakes just as probably some of you have as well where we've attracted the wrong people because we were sold a you know, bill of goods that wasn't worth anything because it was based on their skill or what it was that they said. But once again, it's not what they said that's, it, that's relevant right now. It's what is they're doing. So we got to pay close attention to that. So let's really dig into what an A player is because these are the people that you want to focus on, especially now. A players, they're showing the real colors right now. The B and C players are also showing their colors. So we have to pay close attention to that. So what is an A player? First, they're passionate and motivated to succeed. Passionate and motivated to succeed. From a month or so ago, I can't believe we're even talking this way. <laughs> it was that long ago. We talked about passion and the importance of how you find your passion. We spoke about that and in, in, in I broke it down into a formula that I've created for my team. Remember it was breaking down into, you know, it was, it was a formula, it was patent, I've got it actually right in front of me here. I'll, I'll put it up. Passion plus fight plus strength equals fulfillment. We put that formula together and what is generate, how is passion generated? It comes from four different things. It comes from what is it we do? Why does we do it? How we do it and who we do it for? That when you figure that out and you can see that they figured it out, you know that they've got the energy to be able to move this thing forward. So they're passionate and motivated to succeed. They also love to be measured and held accountable. You have agents in your office that don't like that. They want to just come in. They want to do their thing. They want to sit by the water cooler. They want to get their free coffee. They want to hang out and they want to talk to everybody in the office. We all have that in our offices. But that's not an A player. An A player wants to be measured and they want to be held accountable. And that is our responsibility in a leadership position. The people that shy away from this, no, 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 I don't like the pressure. I don't like the pressure. They're not an A player. Not that they're bad people, 
It's just they're not A players. They have a scoreboard. They have a scoreboard that holds them accountable. We're going to show you different examples of different scoreboards, because if they don't have one, I want you to be able to show them that you have it. Because what you'll see is that our responsibility in a leadership position right now and where we're going to be attracting the agents in our marketplace is coming from a place of showing that we can coach them to be better, not manage them to maintain where they currently are. We're going to spend more time in that, but it all comes to how we hold them accountable and how we measure their success. So we got to show them an active scoreboard, which I will show you. A players, they have the technical skills for the job. Okay. They have the technical skills for the job. And if they don't, they're going to seek out and educate themselves to figure it out. They're going to adapt. They're not going to be hiding in the corner. They're going to figure it out right now. They're spending their time to see how they can make an impact using video offering value in their marketplace, truly seeking out to be leaders in their marketplace by value. They're also humble enough to ask for coaching. They're humble enough to ask for help. So they're going to be relying on us as leaders, as broker owners to help them because they don't have all the answers and admittedly so they don't have all the answers. We also have the other agents that are convinced they have the answers and you and I both know that that's just not the case. They see the opportunities rather than the problems. So clear in today's marketplace. How many agents are you going to see in the marketplace that are not going to be relevant in the market after this is done? Because they did not see the opportunities. What they saw is they saw problems. And they wanted to take the handouts. They want to take in the opportunity to you know, sit on their, on their couch and stream videos and not do anything. But the A players, the people that are on this call, we've got over you know, 100, I don't know, I lost the count of how many people are on this call. The people that are on this call, we see opportunities. That's why you listen to what it is that I've been able to practice to, offer, to use and create these opportunities. Find those people. They're motivated by the challenges. Once again, you're going to see this online. You're going to be able to identify this and who it is that you talk to. You're going to see who sees the passion. For me, I'm, I, I believe in what I'm going to be able to do and create coming out of this thing. I believe, like you believe, that we were built for this, that we have the tools and services that were provided us by Remax of Europe, by our own individual brokerages, by ourselves to find success, to see ourselves on the other side of this. So they're motivated by those challenges but they strive and beg to be held accountable. They see it, they own it, they solve it, they do it. If you hold them accountable to what is it they want, and a lot of people can't do it on their own. Some can. Some of us on this call, we probably hold our, ourselves accountable to a fault where we take responsibility for everything, and I get it. But even us, we need to be able to talk to somebody else that can see us from a different view, see us from a view of, say, 50,000 feet to say, to keep us account, but to keep us on track and keep us from veering into the trenches, keep us focused on what we need to be focused on. So they strive to be held accountable. They always are asking the questions, what else can we do to make it better? What coaching, what coaching do you have for me in, within the office? What type of training do you have? How can you help better my current situation? And what can I do better? The agents that are asking these questions, the agents that you're seeing online right now, the agents that when you're calling these people, they're asking these questions, these are the people that you want to hone in on, you want to focus and make sure that they're taken care of. But what is accountability? People that understand, have a clear understanding of accountability, they want to put things into action now. They want to become part of the solution rather than the problem. You heard that from Richard Robbins earlier in this whole process. Becoming part of the solution rather than problem. They respect for others and their feelings. They're not just out there looking to turn and burn through business. These people are empathetic to people's situations in today's current times. And they want to find solutions. They truly want to come from a position of helping them rather than just trying to sell them on something. Once again, you can truly see how people are acting right now. The guard is down. It's, it's more than just talk. It's what you see. They take ownership and pride in what it is they do. They take personal responsibility. When they stare themselves in the mirror and they understand they're faced with a challenge, they stare themselves in the mirror and they say, I am responsible. I am responsible for being able to correct or better the position that we currently are. They reject the average. They're not willing to tolerate average. They look to you as the leader to say, how can you make me better? I'm not willing to accept myself as just average, especially in this marketplace. I need to protect myself, I need to protect my family, and I gotta protect my marketplace. You find these people, they show others who they are and show that they care. Once again, they show it, they don't say it. 
Now, the five steps of this recruiting process and how we identify them is so very important, especially during these times, because we've had to make adjustments in how we come out and seek these different agents. But when we have our conversation, when we have the conversations, our message now has to be different when we communicate our message to these agents. Because we have to come from a place of stop selling and start helping. I believe this. When you're making those phone calls to these A players that you've identified in the marketplace, your phone call has to start by asking them if everything's okay. You need to ask them, how are you? How are your family? Is everybody safe and healthy? How have you adapted to this stay-at-home order? Are you guys okay? Do you need anything dropped off, picked up, delivered? How can I help you in your current situation? And then, how's everything going in business? How you've been able to communicate with your current clients? How do you continue to see what you're gonna, what your comeback plan is? What is your plan for moving things forward? You have to come from a position of trying to be able to help them because right now they're very vulnerable. And I can promise you that if they're a part of a brokers that are outside the Remax system, their brokers are not making these phone calls. By you making this phone call, you've already elevated your position as a leader. You're truly coming to them to see how it is that you can help them and they will appreciate that more than you ever know. We have to come from a position of helping rather than selling. We have to look at these opportunities ethically. Like I said, we have to have real conversations with people. This is not us just trying to sell them on the idea of being part of Remax. We're introducing what it is to be a part of this family. We're introducing truly that we're coming from a place to be able to help them, coach them, to build a business that supports the lives that they want to live. To be a part of the energy that we have to offer within Remax right now, it would be an asset to anybody looking to start real, selling real estate in today's marketplace. But we have to be ethical in the how it is that we present this. It's just being genuine. You think of it this way. Before you pick up that call, before you engage with somebody on social media, how is it that you would like to be communicated with in today's marketplace? What is it you are feeling? What challenge are you faced with in this marketplace? You need to bring that into the conversation because they need to hear that. They need to hear that from the leaders. They need to hear that from us right now. Right now, I truly believe what's the best thing you can do to help is you have a list of agents that you've been, you've been trying to get in contact with for years or that you have been in contact with. But right now, more than ever, you need to be picking up the phone and you need to be calling them. I know for some of us, you've been relying on newsletter campaigns. You've been relying on drip email campaigns. You've been relying on bomb bomb campaigns, which are fine. But now, during this time, that's not the time for those campaigns. Now is the time that we pick up the phone and we actually have conversations. We actually break down the barriers and we have a real genuine conversation. Remember, we're providing FaceTime. We're showing that we truly care. We ask them how they're doing, how can we help? We provide them information. Remax provides us the information. Use that information to provide to them. Well, you know what? I just saw a great, I just saw a, a, a great talk. I, I just heard a great webinar. I, you know, there's an excellent blog post that I'd like to share with you. Maybe here's a one sheet that could help you in your business. The more we give, the greater we receive. What kind of opportunities, what kind of value can you give to that agent that right now is struggling and completely lost? What is that we can do to help? type of helpful content we can help them with because you know they're not getting it from their other brokers is talk about you know different ways market updates legislative changes information about you know in different interest rates local resources that they have available government agencies maybe government help any any uh, any success stories preparing your homes to list like what are you doing i just saw a great listing presentation that's a plug for me i don't know i'm biased but that's pretty good I saw a great listing presentation and this is how this guy does it and i think it'd be helpful for you as well by you giving this information i promise you you're giving them something that they're not receiving from anybody else and that is going to show them how much you care but we have to strengthen our mindset most importantly we have to strengthen ours so we can strengthen others how do we do that is we have to get outside of ourselves by focusing on helping other people. Because for us, I know that you're struggling. Like I get it. We all are. I am. But I've made a conscious choice to get outside myself and start helping others. Because anytime that I'm irritated because the market is not coming back fast enough, 
or I'm not hitting my goals, which come on. I mean, we had to take those goals and push them to the side after we got into this whole COVID thing. I get it. And I'm not trying to be too hard on myself, but when I find myself getting down on myself, because things aren't coming together fast enough, I have to get outside myself. I step out and say, what can I now do to help? That's the best thing that I've been able to do. That's been my psychological exercise, I guess, in a sense. That's been my motivation through this is to be able to reach out to my agents and help them train, to be able to do webinars like this and to be able to help you, to be able to reach out to my clients and be able to help them. We have to get outside ourselves. We have to make sure that we strengthen our mindset. We have to protect that so that we can protect others as well. But when you, after you've picked up that phone call, you got to follow up. We got to be able to advertise. We got to be able to show them our value. We got to be able to show them once again, the excitement it's in our branding. Now a brand is more, what is it we say it's what is we do. Let me say it again. A brand or marketing is more than what we say. It's what we do. So anything we do is we push out into the marketplace, whether it be on social media, direct mail, what have you, you want to show high energy. You want to show what it is that you have to offer. These are examples of what we've used in the past as far as recruiting pieces. By the way, since we only have 60 minutes, I'm gonna leave this here for a second, but all of these slides will be sent to you. Haley gets them all and she'll send them over to you guys so that you have them. In addition to that, we also wanna write a clear job description. We wanna know who it is and how we're attracting the right people. This is a job description for the agents that we're trying to attract to our team. Once again, you will have this in the slides. We're showing ourselves as a, you know, who we are. We enjoy working as a team in open environment, competitive, but never leaves the team member behind. We're a startup enthusiast default to yes rather than no, because I'm not afraid to, uh, not afraid to fail often and fa fail fast to discover the best path. I'm showing the mentality behind what it is that we have on this team. Once again, because of time, you'll have this slide to be able to review on your own. Recruiting videos. Once again, this video is something that we use, but I want to sell and show the team. I don't have the time to be able to show you the video, but once again, you will have this video available to you because it's now we push out, we have the phone calls. We now sent out the direct mail pieces, truly offering value, telling them what it is that we do, but the video shows it. In the video, it introduces not only myself and the concept, the leadership position that we have, but also what our agents have to say and the experience that they've had in working with us. Because our greatest recruiting tool, no different than our personal own real estate businesses, is our sphere, is our database. Our database is our agents. That is how we're attracting the right agents. When other agents in the marketplace see how successful, how happy, and how driven our agents are, they're going to be naturally want to be a part of that. We give our agents a platform to be able to share their experience in working with their offices in those videos. In a sense, it's our testimonial video. Once we've now attracted them, the phone calls are coming in. Well, we have to have a clear plan in place in regards to how we're going to set up the interview process. I have an interview process. Now, for my personality, I, I'm, I love doing the interviews, but I see opportunity in everybody. <laughs> so I have to, at times, protect myself. So I have my gatekeepers. I have my management team in place that takes the initial phone calls, does the initial interview, and then once they've passed these certain barriers, then they have an opportunity to be able to speak with me where I can then, you know, at that point, they've basically already been hired where I can say whether or not they're a good fit or not. But it starts with a 15 minute interview. With the interview questions, it's, I, I left it right here with, you know, with you, is I wanna know just the basics. I wanna know where they're from originally. Where are you now? How'd you end up in this field? Where are you leaving your current job? Because you know a lot of the agents maybe in your countries maybe didn't come from real estate. Maybe they came from something else. So we want to understand uh, you know, really who they are. Do you have any particular real estate in interest in real estate? I would assume that they would given that they're coming in for an interview. And if this position isn't your ultimate goal in life, and we hope it isn't, what is it that you're working towards? Because for real estate, as you guys know, offers a platform for other things, right? For real estate is giving me a platform to be able to opportunity to be able to share with you guys. So what is it that's, uh, where do they see themselves? Where do they see themselves in the future? And how can we help them get there? It's so important to understand. Uh, we weren't, we're not here yet, but we will be back here again. Uh, what I found was one of my greatest uh, recruiting tools or attraction tools was my monthly happy hours. Uh, with our direct mail pieces, we'd always offer cocktail hours. We'd send it out. 
And every month, I myself, as my lenders and my attorneys, we would host a cocktail hour where I'd open up to the agents that were on our, you know, the list of people that we wanted to have be part of our, uh, of our community. These were tremendous. We would get anywhere between 20 to 50 people show up at these happy hours. And we always were able to recruit mm, about five or so people from these events when doing it. But what it was, it wasn't me doing a hard press and a recruiting app opportunity. It was my agents have an opportunity for me to give back to them so we could just sit down, kind of just be able to relax and spend time together. But it was my agents that were there as my recruiters. It wasn't me. I was just there offering the platform for my agents then to be able to introduce the other agents to what it would be like to be part of our culture, to be part of our community. So when this time does come back, I would highly recommend where you can do in these monthly half hours. I found it to be a tremendous amount of value in attracting the agents to our team. We also want to make sure, as I'm sure, you know, Remax has it all set up for you guys, not only agent contracts, we've got to make sure that they're under contract, which I know you will do, but also some policies and procedures. We want to be able to have people the opportunity to be able to understand clearly what it is they're getting into, setting proper expectations in regards to what it is that you do and how you want things to be processed within the transaction, okay? So we have to have a clear policy and procedure put in place for them to be able to understand. We want them to be able to understand what vital activities these individual agents have. Because look, the reality is, is if one, if they're new to the business, or if they had been in the business with another brokerage, they really didn't understand truly what it is they're doing. Because if they were, they would find found more success where they were. But I believe the reason why that was is that they clearly weren't onboarded correctly, which is so very important in this marketplace. And I know I'm gonna be talking more about this later, but the onboarding process is absolutely critical. But it comes down to setting proper expectations. So as you're attracting agents, you wanna break down, you wanna show them the vital activities for a buyer's agent as well as a seller's agent. As an example, if you're a buyer's agent coming in, which as most agents, when they get started, they're primarily working with buyers. We want to let them know where it is that they're going to be finding these buyers. So we clearly outline where the buyer opportunities are coming from and where it is that they have to pursue. The activities that are involved is being a buyer's agent, once again, make it absolutely clear so there's no question, is they sign a buyer representation agreement. Uh, they mail out the thank you letters after that's signed. They make sure all the buyer information is in your CRM, my CRM, which is my contact management program is property based, which is built off Salesforce. But whatever it is that you use, uh, just make sure that you know, it's, it's there, it's used, it's great. Um, verify the price range with the lender, the buyer. Like I said, this is just breaking down every aspect of what the responsibilities are of that buyer's agent. I have all this laid out so that there's no question to what it is they do. Uh, what happens during offer negotiations, how it all comes in, flows in together as far as the process. We wanna make sure they clearly understand their responsibilities through this process. Once again, setting proper expectations within the transaction. I'm just gonna scroll through here. Once again, you guys will have all of these slides. When it comes to post-closing activities, they know exactly what they're responsible for doing. Once again, your responsibility is to set proper expectations to allow them to have a platform for success. And this is how we've been able to do it. Hey, Nathan. Yes. I just have a quick question because um, you are, this is something that's a little bit different uh, in some of our markets here in, in Europe. You mentioned that a lot of new agents um, that are maybe coming um, from outside of the industry start off as uh, mainly working with buyers. Did I get that right? Yep, that's correct. Um, can you just really briefly explain why you think that would be a good fit for, for new um, agents just starting in the real estate industry? Well, it comes down to two fronts and just in general, and, and I'll scroll through these slides here real quick so you guys can look at it. Um, yeah, so why is it buyers that generally, why is it that agents typically start working with buyers in the marketplace? Is one, that's kind of in a sense, the low line fruit. It's less competitive to be able to say, it's easier to identify the buyers in the marketplace rather than the sellers is what we've been able to find because you have the opportunities where to seek those opportunities out, it costs you less money. Because if you look at lead opportunities as a new agent, you don't have any money. You've got plenty of time, but you don't have a lot of money. So you have to find the outlets that can generate leads quickly for you. The best two ways of doing that well, were, were open houses, which you know they'll come back again in a different way, but open houses 
was one of them. And then also it was, uh, you know, just through your sphere. So identifying who is in your marketplace that might be looking to buy, who is it that you know, like, and trust, and they know, like, and trust you, they can help refer you out when looking for new business and you show the value add of what you can help provide to them as a buyer's agent for them. So it was just easier to be able to find those leads as a buyer's agent. Plus that's one front. The second front is that as a buyer's agent, you truly get to understand the process and the flow of the transaction. I believe that by me starting agents out and primarily working with buyers up front, they can then see and educate themselves of the entire process because as a buyer's agent, you're managing the entire process from the start all the way through the end. The better understanding you have of that, then the better you know, position you have as a listing agent to be able to educate the seller of, once again, that process from the beginning to the end. And then do you have agents think that's, that was really clear. Then do you have agents that are a part of your um, team that are like one of them is supporting the buyers and then the other is supporting the sellers on the same sale? It can happen that way. It certainly can happen that way. Um, you know, the law in Maryland allows us to be able to do that when it's properly disclosed that one of the agents represents the buyer. One of the agents represents the seller. Um, you cannot represent both sides of the transaction excuse mm -hmm. me, both sides of the transaction in Maryland. Every state in the U.S. is different. Every country is different. Um, but, uh, but yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, I'll let you get back to your presentation. <laughs> You're welcome. Absolutely. So, yeah, so we looked at the buyer's vital activities, but now we have to understand what it's like to be a seller and what are the listing agent's vital activities. Once again, I'm, I, I know this is, um, I don't want to get, I know it's a lot of text here, but I, I just, it's so important that they clearly understand the agents in your office, what their vital activities are. Because a lot of us, when it came in and started selling real estate, you didn't know where to start. You ran around the office saying, well, okay, now I got this buyer, what do I do? Now I got this seller, what do I do? Well, we wanted to make sure we took every single aspect of the job and broke it down so they understood the workflow of what it was they're getting involved with. It took them from the point of when they got the lead all the way to the closing and what you're gonna be doing post-closing, right? But the other important factor was we wanted to set proper expectations. We needed to hold these agents accountable. So what I've done on my team is I found a system to hold them accountable. As you can see, this is my operational policy. And in my operational policy, my agents on the, in the office are required to go on at least two appointments a week. And you're going to see why this is so important. But they're required to go on at least two appointments a week. And I had to clarify what an appointment was. An appointment is a face-to-face -face meeting, whether it be a buyer consultation, a listing appointment, or a face-to-face -face price reduction. This is what qualifies on my, in my office as an appointment. Now, if they, they have exemptions, because if they don't have their two appointments a week, as you'll see, they're no longer on the team. They're no longer in the office because they, I just I can't support them because they're now dragging the rest of the agents down in the office. So if they don't maintain those two appointments a week, which is face-to-face, -face, there's certain exemptions that they have. I'm fairly loose with this, but I'm very, very clear. I give four mulligans annually, or yeah, four mulligans annually throughout the entire year. What a mulligan is for the non-golfers, I'm not a very good golfer, I enjoy golf, but I need as many mulligans as I can. It's a pass, it's a free pass, right? So I wanna give four free passes throughout the year. But the other exemptions are anytime it's a holiday week, they don't necessarily have to hit the two appointments during a holiday week. They don't have to get the two appointments during, uh, you know, you know, would there be well, the holiday week, but also they can meet with the same buyer. So say they meet with a buyer, the same buyer twice in the same week, that counts as two appointments. Okay. It doesn't have to be with a different person every single week. It could be one buyer and they meet with them three times. Well, that counts as, you know, three appointments, what have you. Failure to secure these two meetings will result in a probationary period against the agent. Now, when you look at an agent and you put them on probation, most people look at probation as a negative and I get it. And when you look at probation, what you say is, what can I do to take away from the agent? Because they're not performing, so I'm not gonna give them the lead opportunities. I'm not gonna give them the, call, you know, the, the opportunity to be able to answer the calls at the office, whatever it is, you're taking opportunities away. Most people exercise it that way. The reality is, is that you wanna be, you've already tracked, you spent a lot of time trying to attract this agent, recruit this agent, bring this agent on, onboard this agent because you felt that they're air players. And for whatever reason, they're not performing at the level that you thought they were. It's probably most likely because of lack of accountability. 
But when they're on probation, rather than taking away, I want you to be able to institute something that they're going to be required to do because this is something that they probably haven't been doing. What we institute is 555. What it does is we require that every single day, the agent has to show us that they made five voice-to-voice -voice past client calls, five voice-to-voice -voice prospecting calls, and five voice-to-voice follow-up calls with current clients. They have to report that to us every single day to our operations manager within our office, showing that they've done these vital activities. They have to do this five days a week. They get the weekends off, but five days a week. The day they don't do it is the day they had to let themselves go. Now, like, let me repeat myself. The day they don't do it is the day they know they had to let themselves go. I didn't do it. They have choices. We want to give them a platform for success. They choose whether or not they want to exercise that platform or not. So, Haley, any, any questions with that? I, I can't see any questions if anything's popping up, but this is, yeah, this is um, very There was important. one question. It was, how do you check the number of appointments that your agents um, are making every week? Great question. Well, that's good. Good thing I have that slide there. <laughs> so we're, we're going to get into that. Yes, because we want to be able to make sure that we check it and we, we check it all the time. It's a real time database that we use uh, to be able to check it. And I'll show you that. Okay, perfect. Thanks. So we've got the policies and we've now attracted the right people. They're excited to be a part of our culture, high energy, A players. They want to be held accountable. They want to be able to be coached. You bring them on, you've given them all the vital activities of what exactly they're responsible for doing. So it's absolutely clear there's no confusion in regards to what the responsibility is for. You've got a strict policy in place that's only putting them in the very best position to succeed. And then what? Well, and then what? We want to onboard and train them because we have to do this. This is our responsibility. I know this is probably the most difficult part of this process, but this is the core of responsibility. Now, the good news is, is within Remax Europe, you have support within Europe. Like I know what they put in place and it's amazing. And we're going to go through this pretty quickly because I know I'm going to spend some more time with Stephanie kind of breaking this stuff down. This right here, which you can see on my screen is the calendar of my onboarding process with all the agents on my team. When they come into the office, this is the onboarding process. Monday through Friday, what is it we do and who's responsible for doing it with the agents? This is the first 30 days of my onboarding campaign. Once again, you guys will be receiving this uh, in the email, so you can, you know, no need to spend, spend too much time looking at that. Once I've spent 30 days of my own personal onboarding process, then I want to engage them in my training program for the next 30 to 60 days, taking them through more training modules so they can better themselves. Now, for you and Remax of Europe, you guys have an awesome resource with Remax Compass. Remax of Europe has built this out for you so they have all the information for you. So if you're looking at my 30 day onboarding process, use it, you're welcome to, but you guys already have something in place. So for you not to use this, it's a huge opportunity loss. So I highly encourage it. I went through this and I was really impressed with what the team has done for you guys. Absolutely use this. Now you may look at this up, like there's a ton of extremely valuable information here, which is great. You got to put it in a, in a, in a position when you're training your agents, when you're coaching your agents, how can you elevate the way that you present it? How can you create a better experience for how this information is being presented to the agents? That's what I want you to be able to think about. I would encourage you to do face-to-face. -face. I encourage you to do it in workshop type of environments so you can get as much engagement as you possibly can with the agents because that's the best way to be able to do it from what I've been able to find from experience. So Remax of Europe has done a great job with their onboarding and training use it. It's there for you. I know sometimes when it's all this information is given to you, you're like, oh no, I'll just get to that at some point. <laughs> but it's not at some point. Like this is critical because this is setting up your agents for success. If you're not using this, you're only setting them up for failure and you're making your job so much more difficult because all this effort has gone into recruiting. It's having the turnover is painful. Having the turnover is exp very expensive. We have to find a way not only to recruit, but just as important as recruiting, if not more important, is the retention aspect of your team, of your office, right? So for that being said, we have to transition ourselves from being managers to being coaches. Because when I look at management, I don't know for you, but for me, but management to me, it just is, a, is painful. Management to me means maintenance. That's just not how and where I operate. But for coaching, when I see here coaching, coaching to me is based on growth. That's what gets me excited. That's what it, it gives me energy. 
So how can we transition ourselves from being in a management position to being in a coaching position? That's what I want to be able to walk you through because not only is that how we're going to be able to retain our A players, but also other A players from other offices will then see what it is that we're doing and they're going to want to be a part of it. Now, for some of us in Europe, I know you may have no idea who this is, but this is Peyton Manning. He's a famous Hall of Fame quarterback in the U.S. Now, what he says is as soon, and this, he actually spoke at R4. This was back in 2015. He was at the MGM Grand, and he spoke the morning of the opening general session. And what he said in the opening general session, I, I really appreciate it. One, I paid special attention because I was actually the last speaker on the main stage uh, the night before he spoke. So I get to kid around with my buddies. I'm like, hey, guys, yeah, I got to open up for Peyton Manning. So, you know, I, not really, but anyhow, I got to use that. But anyway, uh, when Peyton spoke, he said, as soon as you stop wanting to be coached or taught or mentored, you are in trouble. You're absolutely right. Because then you put yourself in maintenance mode. And this is so important that we put ourselves in coaching because we're also focused on growing. That's where we have to be. Where are they finding their coaches? Because most people think, oh, well, I got to go hire a coach now. That's way too expensive. I don't have the budget for that. I've just been through COVID. I don't, I, you know, I'm just trying to get myself back, you know, again. Where do I find my traction? Well, where people are finding their coaches, we did a, there's a survey done by NAR. And they found their, some 11% said they found their brokerage, the colleague, online search and advertisement. Um, you know, I get all that. But what you'll see is even know that these are where they're finding their coaches, when surveyed agents where they want their coaches is they want their coaches to be us. This is, this is where they're finding it. But where they want them is they want us to be their coaches. They don't have to go pay for another coach. Now, I believe in coaching. Granted, I'm not saying that coaching is wrong outside, but where they want it to really get it is they want to get it from us. So we have to put ourselves in a position to be able to truly how to, and how to coach them. Because why it's become so popular is because it works. Like I've been coaching, I've been in coaching myself personally. I have, I'm coached. I'm coached and I have my agents coached, not only by me, but an outside coach as well. Because it works. The investment that I make, it pays off. So when also surveyed, how did coaching help them? And this is from in the office too. This is, doesn't have to be something that you pay for. This is just from you doing it. How much did it help your business increase in the first year? Over 10 to 20, 25% said it grew their business by 40% compared to the previous year. This coaching contributed to more sellers, to more buyers. 90% of the people said yes to sellers. 80% said yes to buyers. But what is coaching? We have to understand what that is so that we can put it into practice. Well, what coaching is, is training on steroids. Like we can take the trainings, we can do the webinars. And you guys have heard me say this before. But like when I come to speak, when I come to do this webinar, yeah, I want to make you think differently. Of course I do. I want to make you feel differently. Absolutely. But I have not done my job unless I've caused you to act differently. And that's the difference between doing a training and being a coach. Because a training, you get them to feel and think differently, but rarely can you call somebody to act differently. When you coach somebody, you're holding them accountable so that they put things into action. And as a leader, that's our responsibility. So what is coaching? If you look at coaching as a whole, well, number one is discovering. We got to discover the weaknesses of our agents. We have to discover where it is they're facing their challenges. Then we have to train them up based on those weaknesses, based on their challenges. We have all the information available to us. We have to then train them to their weaknesses. But most importantly, the secret is that we have to hold them accountable. And that, yes, is probably the most difficult thing is holding them accountable. This is our responsibility. And this is not only what we attract them for, but this is why we retain them. So showing you where it is that they've helped, no matter where it is, it's always increased their business. It's a helpful position for to be in. The biggest reason why agents get coaching or why well, the biggest reason why agents use coaches is because they want to grow their business. Guys, they chose to be in real estate because you can be a true entrepreneur in selling real estate. You have the opportunity to be able to give them a platform to build a business that supports the lives that they want to live. They need you to support them. They need you to show them the opportunities for them to be able to grow. If you don't, if you don't show them those opportunities and you just give them a franchise that they can just maintain, uh, you know, and pretend that they have a job, they can go find that anywhere. But if you are a brokerage built on coaching and training and truly showing them how it is you can grow their businesses and constantly seeing that path and, and that growth, then you will keep these agents forever and you'll be attracting other people in your marketplace because they'll see what it is that you're doing to help these other people grow. 
See, the difference is most agents are dabbling in everything. They're screwing around trying to find different lead sources. They get to just got to focus on, because we've heard this before. You've heard it from me. If you've heard me speak about lead conversion, the leads are never the problem. It's the conversion. And that's a whole other talk in of itself. But we have to get very clear in what the opportunities are for agents to be able to generate business. Now, yes, because of COVID, have some of these changed and will they change? Yeah, we will adapt as an industry. But we want to get really clear what the opportunities are. and want to be able to educate the agents to what those opportunities are and help coach them up and how that they can convert at a higher level based on these different lead generation opportunities. Once again, you guys have the trainings available to you. You just have to help coach them to be able to track it, measure it, and see where they're getting the greatest response. Okay. We also have to understand, and this is some of this, I don't want to get too much into this because of timing, but this is a typical lead funnel. Remember I said, it's not the opportunities that are the problem. It's your conversion that's the problem. I know you've heard a lot about this over the years, but this is the opportunity. This is how I take leads in. This is how we train all our agents in our office on how all their leads need to be followed up with. I'm sure we'll get into this at a later time uh, because this is a big conversation about how, in, how we best convert leads, especially whether it be internet leads or just leads in general. But this is the flow in which we take people through. We'll get into that later. The effectiveness of, uh, of coaching, depending on the most, it's just, it all comes down to the agent's commitment, guys. I don't care what people spend, if it's more or less, it has nothing to do with the, you know, how much the agents are gonna be committed to the process. It, the agents have to be committed. You have to then introduce them the opportunities that can be available to them, understand clearly why it is that they wanna be able to grow, right? Why it is and who it is they're doing it for. If you tap into that, their a commitment will be, you know, totally invested in making sure that they're gonna be successful. But when they're committed, and you know you have an agent that's committed that wants to be held accountable, they have to be accountable to one thing. The number one thing they have to be held accountable to is appointments. Now the question was, Nathan, how do you track the appointments? How do you be able to maintain all that kind of stuff? Well, we track everything. That's part of our responsibility because what I know is what I can't track, I can't measure, and I certainly can't approve. So coming back to the operational policy, this is what we have in place for all of our agents. We do this because we track it in real time. I have property base built on a Salesforce platform as my CRM. Within that, I track all the activities from all of my agents. What I'm tracking is you can see here on the right hand side, I can look at my activities. So the property, the PV, weekly PV activities are the tasks and their phone calls that those agents have closed within a week. Like for this particular week, I've closed 423 tasks. I'm a busy guy. People can't tell me why well, I don't have time to make my phone calls. You can't tell me that because if I have time to make my phone calls, anybody has time to make their phone calls. Then you can see you know, what activities the agents are closing within the CRM, contact management program, within that week. This is what I'm tracking because I know based on the amount of phone calls that they, that they make translates directly into how many appointments that they go on. So right here, I can see how many appointments the agents have gone on. So the question was, Nathan, how do I track it? It's all here in real time. This program is a program called Gecko Board. Gecko Board. So what it does, it was right here, Gecko, uh, powered by Gecko Board. Uh, it links with, any, with most CRMs. Uh, I don't know which ones you guys are using, but it does link with most CRMs is what we find. What I find is that I wanna be in a position where I can track the agents, not based on the results, but I wanna be able to track the agents based on their actions. Very, very important. So the policy they have in place, as you noticed, it's based on appointments. It's not based on how many closes they had. It's based on the appointments because I know the more tasks they close translates to the more appointments they go on. The more appointments they go on then ultimately translates to the results they produce, which is the commissions they receive. If there's a hang up at anywhere in this process where they're making a ton of phone calls, but they're not booking any appointments, then there's a conversion problem. So I want to be able to train them on their weaknesses, right? on how to convert from phone calls into appointments. And then same thing goes. If I see somebody going on a ton of appointments and it's not converting into results, into the transactions closed, I now know where their weaknesses is so that I can train based on their weaknesses. Now it's hard when I'm looking at a camera here, but I'm assuming everybody's following me right now. We have to track everything. We have to discover, we have to train, and we have to hold them accountable. This is our responsibility. Now, the top qualities of an extraordinary coach, which that's where we are now, guys. Yes, I know we're broker owners. Yes, I know we're leaders, but leaders have to be coaches, my opinion, my view in this marketplace, especially. But the qualities of an extraordinary coach, in my opinion, come down to five different elements. 
Number one, they're absolutely truthful. We don't make this stuff up. Like I'm here having the opportunity to be able to speak to you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not just making up stuff that I've never exercised before. This is stuff that not only that I've been doing, but I'm currently doing today. That's where I can come from. I can come from a place of being honest with you and your agents will see this too. You have to be honest with them. They inspire with vision, inspire with vision, showing them the opportunities that they can create and be able to build the business that supports the life that they want to live. When you get a clear enough why and who they do it for, they will have the energy to be able to push through that. And that's so important. They're intuitive. They get what's going on in the marketplace. You're nimble. You understand what's going on and how it is that you can respond, not react, but how you can truly respond and offer value in the marketplace. They care. They're invested in their success. Now, we all care. I know we do. We care about the agents, we care, you know, about our bottom lines, we care about, you know, I, I, I get it, we, like we care, like, I, I understand that, but really how much are we invested in the success of their agents? Think about that. Because look, in any marketplace, to be a great leader, like there's a difference between being a good, read, good leader and there's another difference between being a great leader. A good leader is interested in people's success. You know, on the surface, they care. But to truly be a great leader, you have to be invested in their success. And when I'm saying invested, I'm saying not only financially invested in their success, but emotionally, by, but, but, by your time, invested in your time in the success of not only their agents, but the families that they have to support. Like that's just, we're going to a different league here. And when I said we have to be ethical, we have to look at the ethical opportunities in today's marketplace. When you're talking to somebody, I want you to be able to talk to them from that position where you're truly invested in not only financially them being successful, but investing your time to ensure that they are successful. That you care not only for them, but for their family. That's a different level that we're taking this to. And you have to lead with integrity. You absolutely have to lead with integrity. Now, what is integrity? Now, if you, most of us on this call understand and know what integrity means. Integrity on the surface means if you say you're going to do something, you do it. That's the definition of integrity. And if I was to ask you here right now whether or not you have integrity, what would most, most of you say? I would say most of you on the other side of this camera, if I asked you if you had integrity, if you said you're going to do something, you'd do it. You say 100%, absolutely, raise your hand, I have integrity. If somebody asks me to do something, I say I'm going to do it, I will do it. But I'm going to ask you again. If you have integrity, when is the last time you said you're going to do something for yourself and you didn't do it? If you said you're going to do something for yourself and you didn't do it, you don't have integrity. Integrity is at that level. If you say you're going to do something, not for somebody else, but if you say you're going to do something, you do it for yourself when you say you're going to do it. That is the definition of integrity. And that's what people see right now. And to be a leader, you have to have true integrity. Not only when you say you're going to do something for one of your agents or somebody within your office, you do it. But if you say you're going to do something for yourself, guess who's watching? Your agents are watching. Your management team's watching. Your industry, your marketplace, they're all watching. Right now, during this whole COVID scenario, everybody's watching. It's more than what we say, it's what we do that makes a difference, especially in our leadership position as us as a coach. Because as I said before, a lot of us are interested in having a great office and to grow and to be a coach and, and to make a contribution to our marketplace. But very few of us are truly committed to what it takes to be able to do that. But when I look at the number of people that are on this webinar right now, I know you're more than just interested because you're taking your time on a two o'clock or three o'clock, this almost three o'clock in the afternoon to be able to be on this webinar to better yourself. You're committed to not only your success, but the success of your agents. And it's more than what you say, people will see this and it's gonna be putting you guys in a far better place. Now, for some of you guys have heard me speak before, and I share this quote a lot because it's something I share with my kids every single day, and it's something that I recite to myself every single day. And it's in times like this, this quote is more important than ever. 
And what it is, is that great people actively create their lives while others are created by their lives, passively waiting to see where life will take them next. The difference is living your life intentionally versus living it by accident. Are we the people, are we the leaders right now in our marketplace that are actively creating our lives? Or are we sitting back and passively waiting for the life to, to see what happens next? Who are we? I would suggest on this webinar, we're the ones that are actively creating our lives. And we're gonna help coach the other people that are lost right now. We're gonna teach them how to actively create their lives as well. We're gonna build out the platform. We're gonna show them the tools, the services necessary to be successful in today's marketplace. Because that's who we are. Guys, we're being challenged. But I know, I'm committed, and I know everybody in this webinar, we were absolutely built for this. And that's why I'm grateful to be part of this Remax family. And that's why I'm grateful to be able to have the opportunity to be able to contribute to you. So I'm actually pretty impressed that we got this done in just less than an hour. So we've got some time for some questions. So I'm gonna stop sharing my, my screen right now so I can see if there's any questions there that I can help you with for what time we have left. Well, look at that sun really coming in. I didn't sneaking in in this, <laughs> didn't see that. Hey, Nathan, thank you so much. That was really inspirational. I'm sure I'm not the only one over here um, who is really inspired by everything that you've said. We do have a few questions. And since we do have a few extra minutes, um, <laughs> Jesse, um, sorry, Jesse was writing a funny question. Um, he's he's he, he wanted to say hello to you, by the way. That guy's um, awake? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but the first question, it was actually from um, the beginning of the session. It was, they were wondering how many people you had on your team. On my team, I have 11 people on my team. So okay. I've got, yeah, 11 people on my team. So I've got five on my management team and then seven agents. Perfect. Um, and when you were talking a little bit about the testimonial video, um, you didn't have time to play it, but as you said, um, everybody will be able to watch it because we will be sending out um, a copy of your presentation. I believe the video is embedded in your presentation. It is. It is. Yep, okay, perfect. Um, can you explain a little bit about how you use the testimonial video in your recruiting process? Yeah, it, it goes, it's, it's part of the, so when I send out, so it depends if it's a bomb bomb campaign or if it's, um, you know, we're, we, we like to target certain agents. The agents that I like to be able to attract is an agent that shows that over the last 12 months, they've been able to produce anywhere between eight to 15 transactions. If they've closed between eight to 15 transactions in my marketplace, to me, that qualifies as the beginning stages of an A player, okay, on the surface. So mm -hmm. when I, once I have my list, then I want to be able to offer value to that list. That's with the bomb bomb campaigns, which I always do individual bomb bombs to those particular agents. You know, with the you guys have seen my whiteboards before. I don't make this up; these are real. I do have the boards, um, and uh, you know, we send out the personal bomb bombs to them. And embedded in the bomb bombs are our testimonial videos. So I I say to them, hey, don't take my word for it. You know, take a look and see what our agents have to say. Beautiful. Um, there was a quick question about how you would adapt your onboarding process from when you're onboarding and recruiting a new agent um, who doesn't have real estate experience versus a, um, a more experienced real estate agent. Um, how do you change your onboarding process? That's a great question. I don't. <laughs> I don't because the, the things that I'm sharing with the, with a, whether it be a seasoned agent or a, a new agent, I can't make the assumption that they already know that because if they did know that they would already have been successful and they probably would need us. Right. So we want to be able to onboard everybody on the same, on the same level. Yeah. Maybe the message may be different because I'm having a different conversation, maybe with somebody more seasoned, but the content is still the same. It's just the messaging will be different. Amazing. We're getting some Italian uh, translation uh, questions. So I just need to translate them really quickly. Um, for how many weeks is a consultant who doesn't reach the two appointments per week in the 555 probationary period? How, how long are they on probation? Yeah. Great question. For a month. A month. A month. And then after that, they need to let themselves go. It, no, 
if they don't do it one day, if they don't perform one day, they let themselves go. After yeah. 30 days of them doing it consistently, they stay. Okay. Yeah, but, but here's the reality. <laughs> when an agent does it consistently, you know, making 15 voice-to-voice -voice phone calls five days a week for over four weeks, guess what happens to their business? Like it goes up, it improves. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I'm like, well, why haven't you been doing this the whole time? Yeah. Everybody's got their excuses. I don't operate right. in a place where you can't, you can't make excuses and results at the same time as far as I'm concerned. So uh, we, we, uh, we coach that towards that. Perfect. There's one more question. Um, we have a lot of Italian questions. This is the first time I had to do this. Uh, oh, yeah. Who inserts the um, agent's activities into your CRM? The agents do. So the agents they in, in Salesforce, when they close their tasks, okay, anytime they close a task, it gets reported, translated directly into my Gecko board. And so um, when your agents are, for example, making a call, do they make the call it from the Salesforce app using their phone and that's how you can check to see if they actually completed the call? They can, or they're just like on their desktop. They, all the information is about that particular client is on the, on the display of the screen, right? Mm -hmm. So every time they make their call, they have to close their task. And then when they close their task, they always create a follow-up task. That's for a different webinar in of itself. But they yeah. close, when they close that task, then it gets triggered and reported in, uh, in the Gecko board. Perfect. And I sent out that link. Um, we do see some, there are some questions about onboarding, but I know we're going to be um, doing that interview with you. So I'm yeah. going to save those questions. For those of you guys who are asking questions about onboarding, please mm -hmm. check your emails because there's going to be um, a whole interview with Nathan that's specifically on the topic of onboarding. Now we are one minute over um, and I know everybody is really busy as their um, as businesses start to reopen and everybody uh, the all of the activities start to pick up. I just want to respect uh, everybody's time who is um, who has been watching today, yours as well. Thank you very very much. This uh, session was very very inspiring, uh, informational. Everybody um, I know that Nathan had a lot of uh, really, really good slides, really good quotes um, and tidbits. We have been recording this. You will be receiving um, the, the presentation. Oh, yeah. Okay, Steph, I got you. Um, <laughs> um, and so thank you again so much. All of you guys um, still pay paying attention and um, tagging along. You will be getting a recording. You will receive the presentation in case you missed anything. Be sure to check your inboxes for that special onboarding interview. Thank you so much, Nathan. You're very welcome. Hey, great seeing you guys. We're, you know, great being a webinar with you guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>